Hello my soccer universe, it is time to preview the big one. We have Real Madrid, we have Liverpool and we have a final in Paris. Making this the most played final in European Cup slash Champions League history. They're already playing for the third time and uh, for me it was really hard to choose which jersey to wear for this final. So midway through the video I will switch to the other team. <laughs> so I'm starting out with Liverpool as the home team. Then midway through the video, roughly midway. I cannot plan this out now, but I have a point where I will then switch over uh, to Real Madrid to now give everyone their due. Uh, in any case, as I said, this is the most played final now. Uh, and funnily enough, there is some history between them that uh, the first time that they met in a European final was, of course, in 81 when Liverpool beat uh, uh, Real Madrid in Paris. This That time it was proper Paris, the Parc des Princes, 1-0 through a goal by Kennedy. And then, of course, four years ago, we had the meet in Kiev. Yes, it's a little bit sad to think about that. We had a European final in Kiev and now, uh, I mean, Kiev is not a war zone anymore, but still, uh, the final ball actually will have the piece Mir Messi on there. Uh, where, of course, Real Madrid beat Liverpool uh, 3-1. This time around, back then, it was definitely Real Madrid the big favorites and Real Madrid uh, and Liverpool the upstarts coming in. I think um, from the onset, it seems like a tables have turned. Back then, Real Madrid was kind of... The, uh, this was a, a really serious final. It's kind of last stand of the old guard meaning that you know for most of the 2010s it was uh, Barcelona, Bayern and Real Madrid and now the new English teams are come, coming in of course that means Liverpool and Manchester City who are now dom dominating and also Chelsea so we have uh, definitely a switch more towards uh, that although we had a Bayern uh, victory in, in between during con Corona times but there's definitely uh, when Liverpool reached the final it kind of for both, yes, now we have to really count on the Premier League being becoming a big league. And then we had already two English finals. And now we have Liverpool against Real Madrid. And to top it off, those are not only currently two of the three best teams. And yes, we can argue where we would place Real Madrid. But uh, given that they have ousted Manchester City, that they had this never uh, say die attitude. And then again, made it many, many, many to the final. I think we should place them definitely in the top three in Europe at this very moment. Definitely ahead of Bayern, who I think are the only reasonable challengers uh, to that top three spot. Um, I would not place them top, but we'll see. I let you uh, decide that. So Liverpool and Real Madrid are 13 because, uh, of course, being Manchester City. So that to me is already hugely exciting. We also have two of the most decorated teams. In fact, if Liverpool win, they will join my AC Milan with seven titles uh, each up there. But it's more or less seven or 14. So it's kind of a final of the sevens in many ways. So there are 19 titles between the two of them. There will be now 20. We already know this. There are 20 titles between those two teams. But how will they be distributed? Will it be Liverpool with their seventh win or will it be Real Madrid with, the, with their 14th win? 14 is a number that is just unfathomable. And um, I think this is the overlooked uh, part. Um, I think most people see Liverpool as the favorites. And I would agree with that. But this competition, the Champions League, is so much Real Madrid's turf. And we saw that throughout the knockout stage. It will be really, really, really in, in, in interesting. Uh, I also think that it's more or less Ancelotti's pragmatism against Klopp's high energy football. So uh, it's a big one. Uh, I have to say, I uh, maybe because it's kind of a sort of expected final, although ahead of the season, none of these were in the top three uh, favorites for um for the title, uh, Liverpool was fourth, and I think Real Madrid was sixth. Uh, but you know, the two of them made it, and currently, I definitely will put them, as I said, in the top three. Um, so, what let's talk a little bit more about uh, the final. First off, where will it be played? Of course, you know it already. Everyone says in Paris, 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 so it will be played in Paris. No, 
The Stade de France is not in Paris. It's in the suburb of Saint-Denis. Uh, and Saint-Denis is an uh, interesting place in the sense that it not only contains the Stade de France, but it also okay, um, uh, contains the Basilic uh, de Saint-Denis, which was the burial place for the French kings and the first cathedral in the Gothic style. So just a little bit history for you guys. So uh, a rather significant uh, suburb of Paris. Unfortunately, these days, uh, it's a crime-ridden neighborhood from what I read. Uh, crime stats are the highest in all of France. So yeah, better market is as being played in Paris. That's all I can say. However, we know the start of France very, very well. Um, in fact, uh, uh, Real Madrid definitely remember the start of France very, very well because uh, they, of course, have won uh, one Champions League already there. That was in 2000 in the final against uh, Valencia. Uh, I do remember that one uh, very uh, closely. Um, and I think uh, the only other recent final was between Barcelona and Arsenal, uh, where also then um, Barcelona prevailed. So, you know, you see there's a little bit of Spanish uh, tilt and we'll come to that in a little bit. But first off, um, let's nah, maybe let's talk about the Spanish tilt. Since 2001, no Spanish team has lost against a non-Spanish team in a European final. That's a major statistic. No Spanish team has lost against a non-Spanish team in a final since 2001. And, and there have been, I think, uh, 16 occasions, and, and that is all comp competitions. Um, but the flip side is, who is the last... Uh, non-Spanish team that beat the Spanish team in the final, of course, Liverpool against Alaves way back in 2001. So maybe Liverpool can end that streak again. Um, as I said, when I look at many details um, between those two teams, while the current form would suggest Liverpool, and um, for me, uh, one of the big questions going in, would you rather be like Liverpool having to play full on right up until last week and now have the Champions League final or would you like rather be Real Madrid who after beating Manchester City clinched the title and had, had could basically relax and put all the focus on the title that to me is one of the big questions out there so yeah talking about the two finalists I already pulled a lot out there but let's um look at their pathway to the final and we'll start of course with Liverpool and as I said Liverpool are now a six-time winner they faced seven-time winners Milan in the group stage at a time when Milan was still in up, up you know still up and coming trying to find themselves uh finals back Liverpool won twice uh comfortably both times the better team although Milan had a 2-1 lead at Anfield that showed what well, they had the interest team they are but on, on the side it was rather disappointing what they showed at the San Siro, to be honest. Um, so I, I was in a group stage. Uh, result wise, probably Milan gave uh, Liverpool the most trouble. Porto, uh, who I still think was the second best team in that uh, group, although they didn't make it out of, of, of the group, uh, easily post 5 1 and 2 0 with this wonderful Thiago Alcantara goal. Um, Liverpool had to fight away from home against the uh, Atleti at home. It was not trouble. Uh, I think the one of the bigger challenges to Liverpool was definitely the round of 16 clash against Inter. The redrawn, uh, do you remember that? <laughs> the redrawn clash against Inter. Where at the San Zero, Inter really gave it their all, was playing full on tilt, hit the woodwork, Liverpool hanging on, and then they score late two goals. And they don't know how they won it. And then in the return leg, uh, Inter are the only team so far that have beaten Liverpool at Anfield this season to a wonderful Lautaro Martinez goal, and then they again collapsed. Uh, the other two uh, legs seemingly were a little bit easier, although in both cases it could have gone wrong. I mean, uh, the away win at, at against Benfica should have been probably more decisive. They toyed with Benfica, and then Benfica could peg it back to 3-3 because Klopp made changes to kind of focus on uh, the league in that case. Uh, so yeah, uh, if with the, against a stronger squad, this might have gone uh, the wrong way. Whereas uh, in the semi-final, uh, the first leg was so much Liverpool that only the last few minutes Villarreal could, could, could do something. But then for the first half of the return leg, Villarreal had them packed back to level. However, the second half, Liverpool could flip the switch, uh, put in a team performance, and they won it 3-2 and made it to the final.
Switching over to Real Madrid, they also played Inter. Uh, and like uh, Liverpool, Inter gave it their all, but just couldn't win in both cases. Especially the first game uh, where Inter largely dominated Real Madrid and they again late get the win. So some parallel dares. Um, I have to say, when you look at the opponents for Real Madrid for uh, Liverpool, you could almost argue, not quite, but you could almost argue that it was e either level or, or that the opponents got easier, at least by name, the longer the competition went on. For Real Madrid, it totally flipped around. I mean, Inter was a tough start, but you know, uh, Sheriff and Schachter were not the real opponents. However, Sheriff won at the Bernabeu. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> it was so long ago. Sheriff Tiraspol won at Real Madrid. And now Real Madrid I, I, I the final tells you uh, it is a long comp competition. The group stage is very, very forgiving. Schachter was never a problem. However, where Real Madrid shown? And it is really, uh, that's where Real Madrid came into the world, is in the knockout stage. In all of the three ties, they were on the brink of being eliminated and not looking good. And they found the resolve at the Bernabeu. And this is probably the big factor in this run to the final, that all the second legs were played at the Bernabeu, where they just had this little extra. It started with PSG, where uh, Real Madrid showed up in Paris, again, after the draw, where I, th I think initially they would have been played, have played Benfica, which they would have much preferred. Uh, they show up in Paris with a super defensive tactic, no Benzema, and they lose through an Mbappé goal a very, very late on Messi also missing a penalty on the way. The crucial penalty I would actually like to add because if that ends 2-0, I don't think Real Madrid are coming back in any shape or form. Uh, it was not the greatest display by PSG, but I think the 1-0 flattered Real Madrid. And then for 60 minutes, PSG bossed Real Madrid. This was probably PSG's best performance. And then they completely imploded within a few minutes. Benzema had packed it, uh, packed it level and then he even scored the winner. The last half hour, it was it was the turnaround, it was the turnaround for the season. Because up until Bonn, although Real Madrid were really big in the league, I had, a, had a big lead in the league. It was more due to the uh, frailties of the opponents than to the strength of Real Madrid. Real Madrid had the only really cohesive squad. But to me, the, the switch that Real Madrid is a force to be reckoned with flipped right there. Then they have to play Chelsea away from home. A brilliant first half performance. Again, Benzema running riot, uh, winning this one 3-1. Yes, Chelsea uh, pulled one back to keep them in, in the tie and maybe they could have gotten a second one. But overall, a really uh, sound and solid performance by Real Madrid. And like against PSG, there was just nothing from them at the Bernabeu until late on Modric uh, pulls out a miracle pass and can send the game uh, to overtime. A game that Chelsea had actually turned around. Deservedly so. And, pro and probably if Alonso score would, a goal would have stood, it would be now Chelsea at least in a semi-final. So it was this resolve that Real Madrid have. Yes! They had a brilliant first leg at Stamford Bridge. However, in the second leg, uh, again, like against PSG, for a good hour, if not more, they have been thoroughly outplayed. But they are a beast that is, you have to kill nine times. Real Madrid has nine lives. And it also proved in a semifinal this way, where they got a way better scoreline against Man Manchester City. A brilliant game. The probably one of the best Champions League games that you will ever see. One that you can watch on replay all along. However, the more you watch it, the more you have got to say that a two-goal lead for Manchester City was the just result. However, Benzema gets the penalty. Manchester City's defensive frailties did not pay off. And again, they go in with a chance to the Bernabeu. Very much like against PSG. And again at the Bernabeu. Uh, I think it was City. I mean, it was a much more level game, but you know, as soon as City then took the lead, uh, with 15 minutes to go and Real Madrid not really creating chances. You really thought that Manchester City are going to see this easily out. And then in just a f in stoppage time, more or less, they packed the game level. And from that moment on, there was only one winner, Real Madrid. And this is the big story of Real Madrid in this competition.
And this will be for me also the big story. Can they do it in a final where they don't have the Bernabeu crowd behind them? That will be interesting. Now, um, going to the uh, the final, the referee of course will be um, a French referee, Clément Tupin, who already um, refereed last year's Europa League final. I honestly don't have too much to say about him. He is one of those referees, and probably that's the biggest compliment that you can get a referee that doesn't get a whole lot of things wrong, but is also not uh, you 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 won't uh, immediately call him out as a brilliant referee as well. But you know. I guess the file, if they give you the final, he must have done something right. Uh, next up, of course, a jersey match. Well, this is the easiest one of them all. Unless Real Madrid wanna really uh, pull one out because uh, remember the last time they won uh, the Champions League at the Stade de France, they were of course wearing black, where both teams showed up with the away kits, Valencia in orange and Real Madrid in black. So maybe Real Madrid pull out their Yamamoto black jerseys. I really do not think so. I think this will be Liverpool in red against Real Madrid in white. And if this is wrong, uh, this will be the biggest laugh uh, that I will ever have, honestly. But this will be rather, I think this should be rather straightforward shoot <laughs> in many ways. Um, and now we, of course, get to who are the favorites according to my model. I mean, I'm, uh, bookmakers see it similarly. Slight edge Liverpool, 56 to 44%. To me, this will be a final. Honestly, that will be won from the bench. Uh, and especially especially when I look at um, uh, Liverpool, where you have some doubts with uh, Thiago, potentially Van Dijk and, and, and so on. Can they uh, play? Will will be fifth enough for nine, 90 minutes. Uh, and then compare this to Real Madrid, who against Manchester City, they managed a turnaround by taking out the three midfield stars with Casemiro, Kroos and Modric. Revent the complete structure of the midfield and turned the game, game, game around and won it. Uh, another big one is that um, I'm not necessarily expecting many goals because unlike, unlike the last time that they met when, of course, Lord Joris Karius made the two big mistakes uh, in, the, in the final, although we now know that he had a concussion thanks to Sergio Ramos, who will be sorely missing, although I think he will be in the stadium and he will be cheering on Real Madrid, for sure. Um, but we have probably the two best goalkeepers in the world in this final against each other. Uh, I don't think there's much to it. I think maybe uh, Courtois has the better reflexes, um, but on the other, other side, uh, Alisson is much better with his distribution. So, you know, but there is really not much between those two. A penalty shooter between those two goalkeepers will be super interesting. And I, I don't want to see it. I, 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 I think I have a little bit. I have the feeling it will be 90 minutes, but if it would get to a penalty shooter, this would be super, super exciting uh, in many ways. But I think if it goes to a penalty shooter, then, uh, or if it goes even, even, even to overtime, then I think it could become a factor that Liverpool has played so many games this season and also that they couldn't rest players now for a long time. This could be a decisive factor as well. As I said, I am excited for this one. This is European royalty. These are two of what I call the top five teams in Europe. Uh, yeah, let, let's rattle them down. We have, of course, Real Madrid and Liverpool. Milan is European Roy royalty, Bayern and Ajax. Yes, ahead of Barcelona. Because Barcelona, I only want to choose one uh, team from each country in Barcelona. And in Spain, it's uh, Real Madrid who have the European pe pedigree. And arguably, um, Ajax has left a bigger mark on Europe than Barcelona ever did. But that's for you to decide it's not part here of the final. That is a discussion for another video. In any case, I really would like uh, to know from you, who do you think will win this final? Uh, are you ex as excited about this one as most people are? Two European heavyweights, no uh, teams from only one country. It's going to be super exciting. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!